What's up guys, it's Connor, and today we're gonna to talk about how to make sure your audio is perfectly in sync every single time. We all know that poorly synced audio is the hallmark of an amateur, but it gets so much worse when this happens with music videos. When your clients are musicians, they're so much more aware of these small details in syncing audio and video, so we need to make sure that we have a perfectly reliable method for this. Real quick before I show you this method, I want to remind you that this was actually posted on my Instagram weeks ago, so if you want to get these tips first, make sure you're also following me on there. At this point, you probably already know how to line up audio waveforms, but just in case you don't, we're gonna go over that real quick and then we'll get to the fancy stuff. So first we're gonna bring in our audio, which is our reference track. And then we're gonna bring in our video clip that we need to line up to this audio track. The first thing we're gonna do is look at the shape of the waveforms and see if we can line things up based on that. So I see a big dip here and here, and then I see a smaller dip here and here, and they're about the same distance apart. So I'm guessing those are supposed to line up. So we're gonna line those up. And once we do, we can see that our audio ends at the same place as the reference track, so we've got the right place. Now we just need to zoom in and make sure that it's lined up as best as we can. I'm zoomed in all the way here, and as you can see, we're not quite lined up. But if I drag our video track back just one frame, which is the smallest increment of change that I can make, it still doesn't line up. We need to keep in mind that depending on the frames per second that we're shooting at, that's going to dictate just how close we can line up our audio. Because if we're shooting 24 frames per second, we've got 24 increments of adjustment that we can make within the span of one second. Now if I shoot 60 frames a second, well now I've got 60 increments of change I can make within that same time frame. So those changes are going to be much smaller. Because I shot in 24 frames per second, I don't have that luxury, so all we can do is make sure that these waveforms are as close as we can get them. If I drag this forward one frame, to me that looks a little bit closer than if I had it one frame behind our reference track, so I'm gonna stick with that. Now this is the part where most people stop and move on, but I really recommend you take this extra step to make sure everything's as good as it can possibly be. So I'm gonna start playing this back, and as we watch it back, I'm gonna hit Shift and J. And as you can see, we've slowed down our playback a little bit. So I'm gonna hit it a couple more times, and now playback is nice and slow, so it's so much easier for me to verify that every single snare hit is perfectly lined up. The reason this is so valuable is because watching playback at full speed isn't always enough to verify that things are lined up perfectly, especially when you're dealing with music that's very fast or complex. Not only that, but drums are really easy to sync up because we have a very short visual marker that we can use to know when a sound is supposed to occur. We know that that snare drum is not gonna make any sound until that stick hits the snare head. So it's very clear to us, it's really easy to line up. But what about instruments that don't have that? For example, vocals are a lot harder to line up, especially if it's some super fast rapping or something like that, where we don't have such a clear visual that we can use as a reference point. Now with just that small shortcut, we can make sure that no matter what material we're working with, we can make sure our audio is perfectly synced up every time using the exact same method. Now this may just seem like extra steps and extra time to your process, but trust me, you wanna make sure this is right up front because it takes a lot more time to correct mistakes like these later on. As always, if you have questions, please let me know. I'm more than happy to help you out. But until then, I will see you in the next video.